The sun streamed in through the window, painting a golden stripe across the mahogany table where Robert sat, reviewing a glossy brochure from Prosper Investments. The room was filled with the scent of freshly brewed coffee, which Robert intermittently sipped. Exclusive opportunities, high returns, secure future, the words on the brochure seemed to dance before his eyes, promising a life of comfort. Sitting opposite him, a sharp-looking man in a tailored suit, Gerald, the representative of Prosper Investments, exuded confidence. Robert, he began, leaning forward, I've been in this business for over two decades, and I can honestly say we offer the best there is. Our clients have always been more than satisfied. Robert hesitated. It sounds wonderful, Gerald, but this is my life savings we're talking about. Gerald smiled, nodding understandingly. I get it, Robert. Retirement is a big step. But think of this as not just an investment in stocks or bonds, but in your future. With us, you're looking at returns of 20%, maybe even 25%. With a sigh, Robert leaned back. You make it sound so tempting, but how can I trust you? There's so much uncertainty in the world. Patting the brochure, Gerald assured, we've got a diversified portfolio, technology, pharmaceuticals, real estate. Our team of experts ensures minimal risk. Plus, our track record speaks for itself. That evening, as Robert discussed it over dinner with his daughter, Lucy, she seemed skeptical. Dad, it sounds too good to be true. Robert showed her the figures and testimonials. Look at these, Lucy. People have made real profits. And Gerald seemed so genuine. Lucy frowned. Maybe get a second opinion. It's not a small amount. Robert nodded, taking another bite of his dinner. I'll think about it. However, the allure of high returns and a secure future nudged Robert towards the decision. Days later, he transferred his entire savings to Prosper Investments. Weeks went by, and the optimistic projection of profits clouded Robert's everyday life. He often checked his account, eagerly awaiting the promised returns. But days turned into weeks, and the high returns remained an illusion. Growing anxious, Robert decided to call Gerald. The line rang endlessly. Frowning, he then tried emailing, only to have them bounce back, undelivered. Feeling a pit forming in his stomach, Robert made his way to the Prosper Investments office, clutching the glossy brochure. As he approached the high-rise, he noticed the buzz of activity he had previously seen was absent. The sliding doors were locked. Peering inside, he saw empty desks and vacant chairs. Panic surged within him. A janitor, noticing Robert's distressed state, approached. Looking for Prosper Investments, he asked, pointing at the empty office. Robert nodded, trying to find words. They cleared out overnight. No warning, left nothing behind. Robert felt the ground slip from beneath him. The realization that he'd been scammed was too heavy to bear. Later that evening, Lucy found her father at the kitchen table, his face etched with despair. Dad, what happened? Robert met her eyes, his voice shaking. It's all gone, Lucy, every penny. Lucy sat down next to him, wrapping an arm around his shoulders. We'll figure something out, Dad, we always do. But as Robert gazed into the distance, the weight of his decision loomed large, threatening to swallow him whole. Robert's days began to blur into one another, each filled with anxiety and regret. The home he'd built over the years, filled with memories of his late wife and raising Lucy, was now on the verge of being taken away. The mail seemed to bring nothing but bills, reminders of his dire financial situation. One evening, as Robert sat sifting through bills, Lucy came in, holding a notice. Dad, the bank's threatening to foreclose. We have two months. He took the notice, feeling its weight as more than just a piece of paper. I'm so sorry, Lucy. I never imagined. His voice trailed off, filled with shame. She sighed, sitting beside him. We'll get through this. Maybe I can pick up extra shifts at the hospital. Robert shook his head. It shouldn't be your burden. I should have been more careful. 
Lucy took her father's hand. Let's not dwell on the past. We need a plan. He nodded, but inside, the hopelessness was suffocating. Late one night, unable to sleep, Robert found himself aimlessly browsing the internet. In a moment of desperation, he typed Prosper Investment Scam into the search bar. The results were endless, but one caught his eye. A forum titled Victims of Prosper Investments. Clicking on the link, he was met with story after story, all too similar to his own. But it wasn't the tales of deceit that captivated him, it was the sense of community. These were people, just like him, cheated and seeking solace. Taking a deep breath, Robert decided to share his story. As he typed, pouring out his guilt, regret, and despair, he felt a weight lift slightly. He wasn't alone. The next morning, Robert was surprised to find numerous replies to his post. Among them, a message from someone named Jeanette92 stood out. Robert, I read your story, and it's eerily similar to my father's. He invested everything and was left with nothing. I'm a paralegal, and I've been gathering information on Prosper Investments. We should talk. Robert hesitated for a moment, then typed out a reply. Within hours, he found himself on a call with Jenna. Robert, there are dozens, maybe even hundreds like us. Jenna began, her voice filled with a mix of anger and determination. The more we gather and share, the closer we get to these scammers. Robert nodded, even though he knew she couldn't see him. I don't know much about the digital world, but I want to help. I can't let them ruin anyone else's life. As the days passed, the forum became Robert's lifeline. He connected with others, sharing stories and gathering data. The group grew, their collective pain fueling a shared mission to expose Prosper Investments and get justice. One evening, as Robert updated Lucy about the forum, she looked thoughtful. Dad, there's a guy at the hospital, Mike. He's into computer stuff, hacking and all. Maybe he could help. Robert's eyes lit up. Do you think he'd be willing? Lucy nodded. I'll talk to him tomorrow. The following day, over coffee, Robert, Lucy, and Mike met. Mike, a young man with a rugged beard and glasses, listened intently to Robert's story. Prosper Investments left a digital trail, Mike mused. If I can trace it back, we might find who's behind this. Robert sighed in relief. I knew this was the right thing to do. Lucy squeezed her father's hand, hope shining in her eyes. We're on the right path, Dad. Robert nodded. Together, we'll bring them down. While Robert's financial woes weren't over, he now had something invaluable, hope and a newfound purpose. With a team forming around him, the fight against Prosper Investments was just beginning. The coffee shop was quaint, nestled in a quieter part of town. Perfect for a discreet gathering, Robert felt a mixture of anxiety and excitement as he waited. Soon, the bell above the door chimed repeatedly as individuals trickled in. Recognizing faces from profile pictures, Robert rose to greet them. Robert, a tall woman in her late forties, asked, her sharp features examining him. That's me, Robert replied, extending a hand. You must be Angela. Angela nodded, her hand firm in the handshake. X Wall Street. Lost a fortune to prosper. Next was a younger face, one Robert recognized from the forum. Max, he guessed. The youth grinned, pushing up his glasses. In the flesh, computer science major. Heard you guys needed some tech help. Before Robert could reply, another entrance drew his attention. A man with an intense look, camera bag slung over his shoulder. Victor, journalist, Prosper took my sister's savings. I'm here to ensure they pay. Robert motioned to the chairs. Let's get started. The group settled, glancing around, sizing each other up. Lucy took the initiative. Thanks for coming. We all share a common enemy, and together, we have a better chance against them. Angela leaned forward, her eyes serious. Look, I've seen scams during my time on Wall Street but nothing like this. They're sophisticated, leaving minimal traces, but there's always a chink in the armor. 
Max, the ever-enthusiastic tech geek, chimed in, and I'm pretty good at finding chinks. Digital footprints can't be erased entirely. Victor raised an eyebrow. I've been trying to publish stories on them. But every time, I hit a wall. Someone's protecting them, ensuring the media stays silent. Robert sighed, this isn't just about money anymore. It's about exposing corruption and ensuring no one else falls victim. The table was silent for a moment, everyone lost in their thoughts. Then, Lucy, ever the optimist, said, We've got finance, tech, media, and determination on our side. We just need a plan. Angela smirked, I've got contacts who might have info on Prosper's financial dealings. Max nodded, and I've been working on tracing their digital transactions. They've covered their tracks, but there are patterns. Victor leaned in. I've got a source in law enforcement. They've been trying to pin something on Prosper for a while but lack concrete evidence. Robert looked around the table. Then let's give them what they need. Over the next hour, they brainstormed, each person providing input. They spoke about potential weak points, possible strategies, and the risks involved. By the end of the meeting, an outline of a plan was formed. As they began to leave, Angela turned to Robert, you know, when I lost my savings, I felt alone. But this, this feels right, like we're on the brink of something big. Robert smiled, it's the start, Angela, and we're in it together. Max adjusted his backpack, I'll dig deep, they can't hide from me. Victor, always the intense one, said, I'll get my sources ready, when we strike, we strike hard. Lucy, wrapping an arm around her father's shoulder, whispered, We've got this, Dad. Robert looked at the departing members of his newfound team, feeling a surge of hope. They were diverse, each scared by Prosper, but together, they were formidable. The battle against Prosper Investments was truly underway. The dim lighting of Max's apartment was broken only by the glow of several computer screens. Maps, lines of code, and financial graphs filled the screens. Max, engrossed in his task, hardly noticed as Robert and Angela stepped in. Victor was already there, scribbling notes furiously. Max looked up, his eyes bright. Guys, I've got something. Look at this. Angela, the former trader, squinted at the screen. Is that? A shell corporation, Max confirmed, excitement evident. Several of them, in fact. They're hiding their tracks using these. Victor looked intrigued. Shell corporations? Elaborate. Angela took over. It's a company that exists only on paper and has no office or employees. Its primary purpose is to store money and maintain financial anonymity. Robert frowned. So Prosper is funneling money into these. Max nodded. Exactly. And by tracking the transactions to and from these shell corporations, I've identified a pattern. Angela leaned in. If we can trace these to a real entity or individual, we've got them. Victor raised an eyebrow. How do we do that? Max grinned. Well, they made one tiny mistake. One of these transactions has a trace. A tiny digital fingerprint, if you will. Robert clapped his hands together. That's our lead then. But how do we expose this without tipping them off? Victor, ever the journalist, interjected, we need to make this public. But subtly, if we outright accuse them, they might cover their tracks even better. I'll start writing pieces, hints at best, about financial scams. Create a buzz. Pressure the authorities. Angela thought for a moment. I have contacts in finance. They can discreetly dig around these shell companies perhaps find a weak link. The group worked feverishly. Days turned into nights and nights into days. Max's apartment became their unofficial headquarters, filled with pizza boxes, coffee cups, and endless lines of data. One evening, as the fatigue was beginning to show, Victor broke the silence. It's published. Everyone looked up. Angela asked, what response? Victor smiled. It's going viral. People are starting to question Prosper's legitimacy. Several other victims have come forward. Robert grinned, perfect. 
We're creating a ripple. We just need to turn it into a wave. Max stretched. I've narrowed it down further. Three main shell companies, all leading to a particular bank in the Caymans. If we can get a name, an account holder, it'll be a huge breakthrough. Angela mused, Cayman banks are notorious for their discretion. But let me make a call. Hours felt like minutes. Then, Angela's phone rang. Her eyes widened as she listened, jotting down notes. She hung up, a triumphant look on her face. We've got a name, she whispered. Victor's eyes widened, already? Who? Angela hesitated. It's a big player. Some I knew in Wall Street. But he's been off the grid for years. Robert exhaled. This is it then. Our breakthrough. Max intervened, but we need to tread carefully. If he's behind Prosper, he's not someone to be trifled with. Victor nodded, agreed, we need undeniable proof. My contacts and law enforcement are itching for something concrete. The group spent another week gathering evidence. Digital transactions, names, dates, bank statements, everything was meticulously documented. As the days progressed, the media storm around Prosper grew. More stories, more victims, and increasing public outrage. Victor's The Subtle Articles had started a wildfire. Robert sat back one evening, looking around at his team. From despair to determination, they had come a long way. They were on the brink of exposing one of the biggest financial scams of the decade. We're close, he murmured, very close. The ballroom gleamed with chandeliers, refracting light onto shimmering dresses and crisp tuxedos. The hum of conversation mixed with the soft tones of a live jazz ensemble. At the center of it all, a banner proudly displayed, Prosper Investments, your future, our priority. Robert, wearing a sleek tuxedo, looked around apprehensively. You'd think after all they've done, they'd be more discreet, he muttered into his earpiece. Angela, posing as a potential investor, whispered back, that's their play. Pure audacity makes them seem more legitimate. Victor, holding a tray of champagne flutes as he masqueraded as a caterer, chimed in, I see our man, by the stage, surrounded by a bunch of psychophants. Max, tucked away in a van outside and coordinating via earpiece, said, stay calm, everyone. We need them to implicate themselves. And remember, the audio bugs are active. We need those confessions. Angela began her play first. She confidently approached the group, her heels clicking assertively. Good evening, she greeted with a dazzling smile. I've heard so much about Prosper and wanted to learn more. One man, distinguished looking with salt and pepper hair, offered his hand, David Turner, CEO of Prosper Investments. And who might you be, miss? Angela Brooks, she replied, knowing full well he wouldn't recognize her former Wall Street name. Your reputation precedes you, Mr. Turner. Turner smiled smugly. Only the good parts, I hope. Angela took a sip of her wine. Of course. High returns, satisfied customers. But I've also heard some troubling rumors lately. Victor, moving closer with his tray, strained his ears to catch every word. Turner laughed, brushing her concerns off. In our business, there's always someone trying to tarnish reputations. Jealous competitors, mostly. Is that so? Angela leaned in, her voice dripping with feigned sweetness, because I've heard from some unhappy clients. Turner's smile faltered for just a moment, unfounded rumors. Our records and success speak for themselves. Robert approached, offering his arm to Angela, sorry to interrupt. Honey, you remember that investment opportunity we were discussing? Turner's eyes narrowed. And you are? Robert, he responded simply. Just Robert. Angela played along. Oh yes, darling. Mr. Turner was just assuring me about the credibility of Prosper Investments. Robert smiled but there was an edge to it, that's funny, because I've yet to see any return on my significant investment. The tension was palpable. Guests had started to notice, turning their heads to the brewing confrontation. Turner took a step back, I assure you, any discrepancies will be sorted. Our team is always available. 
That's the thing, Mr. Turner. Robert's voice rose. Your team has been conspicuously absent. And your office vanished. Victor strategically dropped a glass. As it shattered, all eyes were on the scene. Apologies, he murmured but stayed close, the audio bug catching every word. A lady beside Turner whispered urgently, David, we should go. But Angela wasn't done. You know, David, it's funny how much one can learn from the right people. Friends in banking, technology experts, you'd be surprised. Turner's face paled. What are you implying? Robert stepped forward. That we know about the shell companies, the Cayman accounts. Angela added, and all the victims you've left in your wake. Victor took off his caterer's jacket, revealing a press badge. And when this goes public, Mr. Turner, your house of cards will collapse. Turner's defiance crumbled. I did it for the business. To keep us afloat, you don't understand the pressures. Max's voice crackled in the earpiece. Got it. Clear confession. The room erupted in murmurs. Angela smiled triumphantly. Looks like your gala has become a confession booth. Turner looked defeated. His arrogance evaporated. What now? Robert, his voice firm, responded, now, justice. Security began moving in, but the damage was done. As Robert, Angela, and Victor walked out, the whispers of the crowd told them everything. The scam was exposed. The game was up. The sun was setting, casting a soft orange hue over the city skyline. In the center of a busy newsroom, the chatter was unending, phones ringing and reporters rushing about. The evening news was about to air. Breaking news, a reporter's voice boomed from the TV screens across the city. The masterminds behind the colossal Prosper investment scam have been arrested. In a small cafe, Robert and his team sat together, watching the news unfold. Look at that, Victor said, pointing at the TV as footage of the Prosper executives being let out in handcuffs played. Never thought I'd see the day. Angela smiled, taking a sip of her coffee, the power of teamwork and determination. Max, who had been busy typing on his laptop, looked up, and tech expertise. Robert chuckled, definitely that. Thank you, Max. The reporter continued, not all the money stolen from innocent investors has been recovered, but a significant amount has. The heroes of this story, a group of victims who decided to take matters into their own hands. You think they'll mention us by name? Angela asked, only half joking. Robert replied, I hope not. I'm not looking for fame, just justice. Justice has been served, at least, Victor remarked, flipping through a newspaper. The headline read, From Victims to Vigilance, The Rise of Robert's Resistance. Max raised his cup, To New Beginnings. Robert nodded, Yes, to ensuring no one else falls prey to such scams. Angela leaned forward, That's the thing. We've got this momentum, this platform. What if we used it to educate and help others? Maybe even form a non-profit to guide potential investors. Victor looked intrigued. Not a bad idea. Use our story, our experience. Make a real difference. Robert's eyes sparkled. It's perfect. We turn our pain into a purpose. Help others from suffering the way we did. Max grinned. I'm in if you are. Angela raised her cup to making a difference. Robert smiled to redemption. The group clinked their cups together, united in their newfound purpose. Over the next few weeks, news of their initiative spread. Articles praising their bravery, resilience, and mission popped up everywhere. They held seminars, workshops, and even one-on-one -on -one sessions. They told their story, warning others of the pitfalls and dangers of investments without due diligence. At one of their workshops, Robert stood on stage, addressing an eager crowd. Always ask questions, he advised. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Angela added, and always do your research. Don't be pressured into making hasty decisions. Max chimed in, from a tech perspective, always ensure the platforms you're using are secure. Victor, holding up a newspaper with their story, said, 
And remember, you're never truly alone. There's always someone out there willing to help. The crowd erupted in applause, many moved by their sincerity and passion. Months turned into years, and their nonprofit became a beacon of hope and guidance for many. While they couldn't change their past, they had certainly shaped a brighter future for many others. One day, in their office filled with thank you letters and photos of their events, Robert looked around, we did it. We turned our darkest days into a legacy. Angela nodded, it's been a journey, from victims to victors. Victor added, and we've only just begun. Max smiled, looking at a letter from a grateful retiree who they'd saved from a scam, to many more successes. Robert raised his cup, to justice, to redemption. The group nodded in agreement, knowing that while their battle was won, the war against scams continued. But with every scam they exposed and every investor they educated, they were making the world a little bit safer for the innocent.